Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In the previous video we discovered that I am in fact rusty as far as how the stock uh, com that works or at least I I mean I should have remembered that of course these numbers only apply to when a dish is connecting directly to the DSN which is the ground stations and not to other satellites but I had a brain lapse and I said that that was the range to another satellite which it is not so that didn't actually cause the communication issues we found around EVE. It was just a matter of the range of the dishes that we actually put on the probe uh, that was ina uh, inadequate for the purpose. And so we were a little bit stretched. Still, it worked out in the end, but just by sheer luck. And so, yep, we could do a better job with that. So anyway, we finally got a Minmus contract here. Um, so let's rendezvous two vessels in orbit of Minmus. Okay, and then it's just rendezvous, which means I think in uh, two kilometer range. And then we have uh, rescue uh, Kerbal around Minmus. So we would automatically get that done if we rescue this Kerbal. So I think we should just do that. And also we have to position a satellite with all this stuff in a stationary orbit around Minmus. So I think uh, we'll send an uncrewed vessel to this thing. Get that done, then rescue Chadman, uh, who will also fulfill this contract, and so we'll just get, knock those out really quickly, hopefully, maybe. I, I like this rescue caller from Orbit of the Moon. I'm not going to pick it up, but uh, that's funny. Uh, this volcanic rock isn't going to happen. <laughs> Res uh, not rescue, not rescue the volcanic rock, though, maybe. But uh, picking a up a rock on Eve and bringing it back to Kerbin is... Uh, is not worth this amount of money. It's worth, it, they'd have to give me a lot more. Yeah. We'll worry about the remaining EVE contract when that window comes up. We're not at an EVE window right now. And I haven't come up with anything to do with that EVE satellite, so we're just gonna proceed with what we can do. Oh, well, maybe we should do the Gilly thing. Okay, we'll do the Gilly thing first and then we'll do Chadman. Okay, we have a limited amount of time, basically until the signal strength goes out. So we have to make this rendezvous pretty quick. That's one day, 20 hours. Ultimately, we have to go beyond Gilly's orbit because it's behind us. We have to allow it to catch up somehow. Well, there is an encounter. One day, 19 hours. Will we have connection? I don't know, but let's see. Let's see if we can make Gilly. Well, it's a it needs to be a little bit accurate here. Let's not let that wander off too much. Uh. Okay, well, 0, 0.0 it says. And we sort of have an approach. Let's see. And that's further. Let's go opposite direction. Okay, we have entered Gilly SOI with 5% connection. We're a little bit far out from Gilly, but that's probably all right. Let's quickly do some science. make it all official. We could probably land on Gilly. Well, let's see if we can capture it all. <laughs> We've only got 500 meters per second. And we're in a complicated orbit, but it seems like it. Seems like we can capture. Now, one thing we have to worry about is at our landing location... Oh, we lost connection. Okay, well, we can lose connection here too, apparently. Uh, so what, our connection back is going that way? Through Gilly? Uh, yeah. The KSP is there, so we're going to pick up connection in a little bit. We'll be doing this burn late then, but that's all right. Well, we've already got it back. Okay, it was just a little bit of gilly that was blocking our way. Okay, that's a fine periapsis. And actually, since uh, the communication line is going on that side, we would like to land uh, maybe here-ish would be good so that we get sunlight as well. No, that'll do. Okay. We are recharging. This is not yet low over Gilly. I think that's six kilometers. I think our current location is fine, to be honest. Let's just go straight down from here. So I'll just kill horizontal velocity. Okay, now we should be able to do low over Gilly science. Yes. Nope, there's a rock there. Well, train scatter. 
a lesser kind of rock. Will we bounce? Nope. It's okay. We're, we're sort of sliding a bit, though. Does it count? Um, Highlands, yes, it counts. And we are recharging, so transmit. We can go to a different biome and everything. I mean, we could go to all the biomes with 284 meters per second, but you know what? I'll leave it here. Let's get on to other things, and if we need to, we'll use it more in a pinch to get more science. We have 788. I guess we can unlock some other stuff. Maybe some antennas that can actually help. Uh, I don't know. This one, 15 gigameters is good. Magnetometer boom I've never used before in stock. We had mods with magnetometers like uh, D-Magic Orbital Science. But yeah, that's that'll be a novelty. Okay, let's research this, because comms are important to us, we've discovered. And extendable solar panels, light strips. Um, sure. Miniaturization. The small docking ports are probably very important. And the little nose cones are nice. We'll get those. Okay, so we sort of filled out the 90 tier. And that does not leave us enough for the cheetah. That's fine. We'll wait on that. Let's see. Maybe we can make a pseudo Gemini service module thing at the bottom here with the Science Junior and a larger, larger heat shield. Okay, so how much Delta V does this have? It'll be enough to come back. So I'll have enough propellant to deorbit from Minmus and return. But honestly, I think the ant engine could have done that too. But the ant engine is actually a little bit more expensive. Let's take a look. So an Oscar refuel tank is 70. And then we'd have two ant engines, which are 110 each. So that's 290. This current setup, these two are 50. And these are 30 each. Ah, but we've got 12 of those, so this is more expensive. We've got too many of these. It's a little bit tall like that. We'll have to check the Delta V with the Oscar B. Maybe we shouldn't have the Oscar B. Is there some other... I wish we had little spherical tanks for LFO. Maybe an adapter tank of the right sort might be enough. Well, that's a bit big, isn't it? The nose cone is just a little bit too small for the plate at the bottom of the ant engine. Great. 225 it says, but that's... oh, that's altitude. Eight, 885 huh, with this one, huh? It's not bad. This looks a bit tallish, though. So, okay. Engine plate. Maybe we should use an... Uh, I like it on the butt of this tank, though. Maybe we can use a reverse engine plate. But how expensive are they? 250 Honestly, the decouplers themselves are not that cheap anyway. Uh, that's not the effect I was... I could shift it up, but that's not really the effect I was looking for. If you want to use an SSTO, this is probably too heavy for it. We would have to toss up the SSTO and try and bring it back straight down. I'm gonna go Ant Rescue 4. Let me see about our SSTO. Somebody suggested Phoenix for the name. I think we will do that. That's still a lot of Delta V for the Phoenix, actually. It seems like if we just made this stage smaller, it'd be able to get to orbit, but then... Hmm. Maybe we shouldn't have the Terrier at all. That's a long burn time, though. Hmm. If we switch these out for Spark Engines... Then maybe we can just have a tank here instead of have the Terrier at all. Okay, we have the very small nose cones and the Spark Engines. 
That's a little bit icky. I like a fairing piece there. Well, it's not exactly thrilled with me having this umbilical. It's not reading the delta V at all. Uh, maybe if I move the engines down here. Okay, now it's reading the delta V. All right, now we're in business. This is, does not have does not seem to have improved the situation for the stage though, just removing the terrier engine. Okay, well, if we can save the Phoenix, we can save the Phoenix. If we can't, we can't. We'll see how it goes. We'll launch this as Ant Rescue 4. And we will not have a Kerbal inside. Uh, we have the Science Junior, we have the Goo, but we were also supposed to have... Well, we have an antenna that can generate power. I thought we were also, also supposed to have other things. Maybe not. Okay, that looks like a good enough location. Let's hope I remember to actually turn this time to the right launch azimuth. All right, here we go. Launch. Okay, well, it's only going to get more wobbly from here. I've done too much of a launch azimuth, I think. I'm gonna try tossing this up into space and then getting each part into orbit separately and see if that can help bring this back properly but uh, it's probably not going to help we'll see okay so we'll go with that apoapsis and separation and we're going to flip this around uh, so, let's see, control point, no, reverse is fine. Um, that didn't seem reverse, oh, let's say control from here. Okay. So taking a look, we're over here, the Phoenix stage is back there. Okay, our apps is getting a little bit out of hand. Let me switch to that and get it into orbit, and then we'll switch back to the probe. Okay, so prograde. It's already going down, so actually not prograde. We need to hold there. Prograde. We're not going to be able to get into full orbit here. We'll just try and get it back as close to the KSC as possible then. So we'll exhaust the fuel. Okay, so it's oriented properly. It's going to be hitting the atmosphere pretty soon. Actually, maybe just a uh, retro burning straight would have been better. We're not going to get halfway across the halfway around the world. So, maybe just getting to the eastern peninsula or something would have been good. Okay, so we've made orbit with this. We can let it be for a sec. And can we go back to that? All right. Oh, we've lost communication because of plasma. I wish when we lose communication it would hold the previous command though. Okay, we've got parachute deployment. We are over ground. And here we go again. Will it topple? Will it balance? Seems reasonably flat. There's some rocky stuff going on over there though. That's a pretty big slope. Uh, uh, oh no! Oh no! Oh well, but 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 maybe. Oh, <laughs> those parachutes worked wonders right there. All right, recover vessel before it starts sliding down. Those parachutes were awesome. Okay, well, you know, we only got forty-three point two percent back, but still, something is better than nothing. I thought it was going to be counterclockwise. Didn't it say inclination 100 and something? Oh, that's Eve. The Eve one was 100 and something. This one is... Oh no, this has to have a thermometer. I was looking at the Eve contract. Oh, gosh darn it. I forgot a thermometer. I keep forgetting a thermometer somehow. I thought it was going to need a thermometer, but I was looking at the Eve contract and I went, Oh, well, I guess it doesn't have a thermometer. I should have put a thermo thermometer anyway at this point. Hmm, 
Maybe we should send a little thing to... When do we get the claw? <laughs> when do we get the claw? Let me just see. If we, if we could claw this with a thermometer. <laughs> a little probe with a thermometer on it. The claw is just over here under actuators. You know what? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to move that ghillie probe over to another biome. We're going to get the 160 science. We're going to get the claw. Oh, they've got a junior one. We're going to get the junior claw. And then we're going to make a little probe with a thermometer on it that will grab onto the probe that we currently have. And that's how we're going to do it. <laughs> Honestly, the Eve sat just waiting to go to a different biome on Gilly was basically like a Chekhov's gun sort of situation. Well, we're just gonna go up a little and maybe over here because we'll chase the sunlight. We're depleting power right now. So we are going retrograde westward. Well, best we do it now, because we're not going to have probe control over it for very long anyway. Oh no, it's already getting darker over there. Oh no, I ended up going up. No! So close. Alright, Fizz Warp. Up. Oh, am I on the ground? Sort of. Okay, let's see. Log temperature. Midlands! It's new. It's new. New science. Log pressure data. And if we roll, do we get power? No. It looks like sunlight, but it isn't somehow. <laughs> okay, anyway, we got, we got some. Let's go back and execute our cunning plan. I can't believe they put the claw this low. I mean, that's really powerful. Okay. So, we will want the hex. We will want the mini claw, which I'm very excited about. I didn't even know about the mini claw. So, that's not much thrust to weight ratio. Maybe what we'll do is we'll have two Oscar bees. We'll use those nose cones. Tilting out is a minor problem. Uh, people seem to overrate the losses due to tilts like this or changes. Uh, the time it takes to do a maneuver seems like people don't understand how much difference it is. It's actually very minor. That'll get us a thrust weight ratio of 1. And we have 2,000 meters per second already. What I want to do is make a rocket with a spark at the bottom. Maybe having two sparks is better. Make sure they're rotated so that the gas generator exhaust is not po poking out and then... Still annoying me with the base plate though, but I think we sorta got it there. Alright. So now, sea level thrust weight ratio is great. We could probably add another tank or two. I've had bad experiences doing stuff with little spark rockets, but we'll try it. I, I guess we'll just go with it and see. It's I, The claw might be a very blunt end, though. And it'll probably have very bad aerodynamics. Thanks to the Thermometer and barometer, though, it's actually pretty expensive. They're very expensive parts. So you've got to watch out for that. Okay, let's see if we can rendezvous with the other thing or even launch. We'll call this Mini Claw. Mini Claw. We've done Gilly, we're doing Minmus, and we're doing Mini Claw. I'm thinking I'm gonna call this episode All the Small Things. Can it launch properly? That's the question. Throttle up, SAS is on, and go. We might go with the go straight up more thing first. Instead of trying to tip over. Ah. Uh, yeah, we should just go up. 
All right. And yeah, let's do everything at once. And separation. Separation. The power of ants. Oh god, we're gonna have to claw- we need to- we should have put the little RCS ports. Oh jeez, I forgot about that. We'll see. It's possible to do it without the RCS ports, it's just a little bit of a pain. I may have underestimated how much Delta V we need though. Lies! Lies! How dare you lie to me. We will try again with something a little bit more substantial, I think. The spark rockets always disappoint me somehow. But this time, let's just not take any chances. We've got solar power, we'll put the RCS on. We don't actually have the inline RCS tanks. So at long last, uh, the tiny little RCS thrusters that I've been looking forward to using. This is actually heavier than I thought it would be. It's 0.6 tons, jeez. We'll have to trim that down eventually. We could theoretically just leave off the ant engines and just use RCS. Hmm. How much RCS fuel are we talking about here? 0.12 tons. Let me see how much delta V that ends up being. Now it's 518 meters per second with just the RCS. I think we'll just leave off the ants. Oh, you know what? Let's just use a fairing. There we go. A little Atlas style fairing. And we'll use a single stage to orbit. I will add fins. Especially since we don't have a powerful reaction wheel up there. Okay. Mini Claw 2. <laughs> so we want our launch site to be under that orbit, not in the middle of nowhere. If we ultimately are at an angle that gets our charge back. Uh, I should have put it on launch climbs to recharge it. Okay, but we'll just bring it back in and then put it back out again. Well, it's in fairings, so that's why. Okay, recover. Alright, lineup looks good. It's behind us, so we can get into a higher orbit. It's just approaching. We could probably do a direct transfer. So, oh, rendezvous. SAS on, throw us up, and launch. Okay, we're through the worst of the pressure, so looking good. Okay, that's high enough. Um, nope, it's not high enough. Or please. All right. Well, that looks good. We might as well just keep burning towards it, actually. Yeah, we don't have much authority without the engine being on. 12.8 kilometers. We're just going to use the rocket stage to go over there. Oh. Temporarily lost communication, but we're in full orbit right now, so it's not a big deal. Okay, that's a uh, suborbital periapsis. I'm gonna let go of the stage and let it descend, and we'll do the rest with the RCS. Okay, here's a little probe. Arm the claw. We're gonna be within render range soon. Look at our little guy go. Alright. We have arrived. Um, I guess we can just grab onto this tank. We'll have to remember not to stage off the tank beforehand though. Um, This way. Okay. Board, board, board. This is the first quote-unquote docking we've done. Oh no! I'm gonna bump it. I'm just gonna let that happen. Okay. Reorient. 
Okay, we've oriented properly, and we're gonna grab on to the tank butt. Still too much RCS. <laughs> RCS is still too powerful. If we do have to dump the tank, we're gonna have to relocate this. Okay. And it should be relatively in line with in line with the center of mass, we'll see. If not, we'll use the RCS to hold it steady. Alright, we need to replot this. Delta V-wise, we have a little bit less because we've got the extra probe core, we've got the claw, we've got the RCS and all. So that's a little bit sad, but... Actually, we'll let the claw and the thermometer and barometer go at the specified location for the satellite. We'll just leave those there. Okay, here we go. Burn. Not much use of roll, yaw, or pitch, so it's close enough to inline. We don't even need the RCS to help. Well, this has become an odd little vessel. Okay, that should be close enough, right? Right? No! Why are you so far off? Okay, we'll need an inclination adjustment. Well, that'll match the target over for that, and it'll only cost 180, basically. So we've got it. Let's make sure we're charging up. Oh, uh, let, we don't need to use the RCS for that. Okay, we have all the stuff for this satellite, right? And... Yep, yeah, right. Okay. We are recharging. Let's go do this thing, finally. Okay, orbital burn and satellite contract, contract fulfillment. Oh, that's not quite the orbit they wanted. Oh, there we go. Just need to hold the orbit directly above Advis's impression. This doesn't seem directly above. Yeah, I think this is supposed to be a stationary orbit, so we're going to boost up temporarily. So we're temporarily out of the required orbit. I don't know how directly above they want. Uh, I think on this orbit we can bring it back down again and see if it works for them. Is that good enough? No, it doesn't say hold stationary orbit directly above Hadvis' impression. Oh, uh, it uh, said hold stationary orbit directly above Havis' impression is satisfied, so we just need to pull our orbit back down again. Okay, we've filled that contract, and now Chadman's wreckage, we've got just a 12 degree difference to, but uh, Chadman is behind us, so let's boost up, and as long as we don't escape Minmus. We'll meet Chadman right there. Oh, I guess we can dump off the this little guy. Okay. Well, let's see. Any signs to be done? No. We've sort of done it here already. We could land the probe on Minmus. But maybe the claw is more useful if we just leave it in orbit. Um, material study, any value to bring it back? Yeah. Well, let's keep it the experiment and keep the mystery goo as well. Only 3.5 for the mystery goo, though. All right. The claw can go. Release. Okay, making sure we're not going to hit the little mini claw and go. I should have dumped some ablator, though. Oh, just turning around changes the separation distance. Okay, fine. That doesn't happen in Realism Overhaul much. It's interesting how it happens here. Anyway. Make sure we are in a good power situation. And we proceed. 
Okay, Chapman, here's your ride. So this should count as a rendezvous of two vessels, right? Yep, that's done. Never use these pods, Chadman. You should know better. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so Chadman's a pilot, too. Now, is, is the whole Science Junior and everything balanced enough on this heat shield to work? That's one good thing about not reducing the ablator on the heat shield, though. The heat shield's going to be heavy. Oh, but we don't have enough parachute, maybe. I forgot about that. Chapman may have to bail out. <laughs> we'll think about that. Uh, at least he seems to have a parachute there. We could try to jettison the ablator. Uh, not the ablator, the heat shield. We'll see about that possibility, too. Okay, well, Chapman's in. We can try to return. We can't actually land on Minmus because our thrusters are backwards. We'd have to try and sit down on the parachute. And Oh, I missed a node. Um, I think Gilbert's big enough that we could just go ahead and execute the node now. Okay, burn for return accomplished. Well, this has been a long sequence, but... We're finally getting to the end of it. So we are... We've got the full tank here. That's not necessarily a good thing. So I think I'm going to drain it into this tank. Except we can't. We can't? I guess we can't. All right. Fine. Separating the tank here. Okay, so we can, though... Retro burn to get rid of the fuel. So now it's going to be like we're coming down from low carbon orbit. Okay, but let me make sure that our periapsis ends up okay. Could have done the fuel drain valve, but you know, it's the same thing anyway. I think 21 meters per second isn't going to throw off the parachute that much if. If one parachute could ever have held this together. Okay, we want to control from the pod finally. And I want to go retrograde. Chapman can't even hold retrograde on its own. Let's see. There's a Jetson heat shield op option there that we may use. Basic heating effects. I think I'll take off SAS. Oh no, it's imbalanced. Oh, it's leaning to one side. I think maybe the cubic octag? I don't know. We also have an antenna on one side, too. Oh, it's flipping, it's flipping! Oh, no, no, uh, no, no. Yeah, it looks like the balance is definitely off here. So I'm manually trying to control it. Anyway, not detrimental, but scary. I guess we could do the other goo. Oh, well, not much science, but we might as well. Okay, parachute. Okay, what's our speed? Uh, you know, 9 meters per second, it might work. It might be okay. If we can get the heat shield back, that's value, you know. I have no idea where we are, though. Eh, it blew up anyway. <laughs> okay, um... We'll just recover. We got Chadman back. We did all the things that we were supposed to do, eventually, after much, much deviation. Okay, 54 science earned, not that much, but uh, we were on the other side of Kerbin, basically. 
And we got Chapman back. Okay, we got a lot of funds now. And we got that contract done. I think... Wow, the VAB upgrade is actually 1.69 million. Uh, the R&D building is 3.38 million? Maybe I don't have as much money as I thought. This is 1.126 million. This is nicer. <laughs> we don't really need it very much. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe... Maybe we'll wait. <laughs> maybe I don't have as much money as I thought. Anyway, we'll see what we do next time. It'll depend on what the how the planets align, if you will. But, yep, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.